Hi, it's Mike from Powersonic and Apprentice One to One. Today we're going to have a little look at a couple of different ways I approach dressing consumer units based on the cable entry, be it top, bottom or from the rear. And um, yeah, I'll just run through some of the things I do that make my life a little bit easier. Primarily because a lot of the apprentices who follow my content have asked, you know, how I go about doing stuff. And I am mindful of not doing how-tos, but I'm going to go a little bit more into detail where I can and discuss some of that. It's also National Apprenticeship Week. And for those of you who have watched Monday Club over on Sam's channel, you will have heard me mentioning about that and sharing some of your work and some of the stuff you do. And this video is all about that. So we've got a number of competitions running, giveaways competitions running across social media. Spin you around, you'll see on here, this is some of the stuff we've got. So we've got these crimping tools for your uh, terminal ends, blue and yellow and red ones on there. There's the ferrules. We've got a great big box full as well. Thousands and thousands of um, terminal ends in there. Also got some lockout kits, which are left over from some stuff that Klein sent in a while ago, so Super Odd Klein. We've got this DeWalt combi drill driver with a five amp hour battery. Somebody's kindly donated. Matthew Johnson sent that in. We've got Ben who sent these in. These are the TIS 851s. He's also sent in some on-site guides, which you may be able to see down there. There is um, a bit set from Bosch. We've got these Draper screwdrivers. A load of hand tools have been sent in by um, Craig from Quinergy. So I'll talk more about all of this in a little bit. There is also some done in. So I've got some stuff coming in from Schneider. Um, some of the people have reached out through the course of this week's giveaway has been put onto Instagram. So I've been releasing them on Instagram and Twitter. So if you're not seeing them, go and check it out. It tells you how to enter into all of those over on those platforms. Um, but there's been some people from Instagram who've offered some other giveaways. So I've got stuff being posted into me now. Um, I believe Pete Burke's sending some stuff in. There is um, Andrew as well from over on LinkedIn. He's sending some stuff in. He's done some giveaways with us before as well, actually. So he's going to um, send a bit of gear over so I can get that out on a giveaway as well. We've basically got two running every day all through the course of this week. So I'm going to try and get this video out. Probably be Wednesday night thinking about it. Um, so there'll be two every day, hopefully till the end of the weekend. And then I'm going to do some sort of YouTube slash video live where I choose all of the winners. Um, obviously it'll be done fairly, random selected, and all of the rest of that. There is a couple of the giveaways you can enter on other people's content. So if you win the drill driver, for example, you need to go over to Sam's latest Monday Club episode and comment with the hashtag share your work. And if you wanna win this Bosch bit set, you need to go over to the electrician show and answer the question, of what did Rick say he's not seeing a lot of in the first 20 seconds of that video. Just a little bit of fun to make my life a bit easier and get the guys, Neil and Sam, to help me select some winners of these competitions because on Instagram, I'm getting way over 200 entries on every single one and it's proving a bit of an administrative nightmare to get that all set up to draw the winner. So I thought if I make it where you've got to go off someone else's content, leave a little comment, then they can pick a winner and we'll have them hopefully chopped into my video, choosing all of these winners, um, letting you know who's gonna get the loop. There's quite a bit of stuff here, and so we've got some in the boxes down there as well. Oh, we've also got these gel packs, these have been sent in as well, and I've got those going out on a post in a little bit of time. So these are the shell boxes from Whisker, where you've got the IP68 with the little lever connectors. They're just sample packs, but there's lots of them on a giveaway as well. And the whole idea of all of that is to just kind of um, help apprentices, help put some equipment into your hands that's going to help you progress your learning and your, your careers and show that the industry does actually care about you and we are um, committed as a trade to try and help whoever can. There's loads of people on social media who are really stepping forward to help apprentices with employment, with a bit of motivation and opportunity to get some work experience. And um, yeah, the whole idea of what I've had through the course this week is to just give back a little bit and try and show that we care, I guess. And I hope that's the way it's come across because that's the way it's been intended. Um, and yeah, just, just keep pressing along. I know sometimes it can seem a bit hard and I want to encourage all of the apprentices who are following my content to share your work. So I mentioned that on the podcast with Sam. I know that many of you are nervous about doing so, 
because you'll see some of the critical debates and discussions Sparks have on each other's work in the social media space. And I think it's important you get involved in that that discussion and the power of creating a diary of your own journey through your training and then leading towards being a qualified electrician in your own right is something incredible to look back on in the future and you shouldn't miss out on that just through fear of what other people might think of the work you produce. You know, just do it anyway, get on with it, tag us in the post, you know, we all love to see it, tag myself, Neil, Sam, so that's the um, Electricians Monday Club and the Electrician Show, um, Quinnergy as well, Pete Burke, tag us all, um, Ryan Davies, tag him as well, um, he's been sharing some of the stuff that I've been up to through the course of this week, Mike from Loadout, Residual Current, you know, we all like to see what you guys are doing out every day and the, the journeys you're on. Um, so yeah, Matthew Taylor, one we gave a shout out to, who does an incredible job of that. So be like Matthew, share your work, get it out there. Let's get on with this video there. I'm going to show you a few little tips on how I set up consumer units. I hope you might find it useful and watch out for the draws for all the giveaways coming later in the week. Okay, so we're going to start on the test board. You'll see here I've got a Luden split load board I've repurposed and we're going to pretend it's a main switch RCBO board. I've also dropped a few different miniature, circuit, miniature RCBOs in just to show you the differences in sizes and you'll see the Luden one is a little bit taller than the Hager one which again is a little bit taller than the M2 ones and I'll speak a bit about that in a minute. But you can see to start with I'm just getting the neutral fly leads into the neutral bar. I always do that first just to try and get them tucked out the way and then we can start on the final circuits. Um, with these ones, if we're going for top entry, which is what this board is, and top and rear entry tend to sort of be the same. I would always try and get the conductors down behind the DIN rail and then loop over into the top of the protective devices, in this case the RCBOs. Now you can bring your neutral and lines down together or you can separate them apart and bring them down or you can swoop down individually onto each RCBO. And obviously if you're working with pre-cut wires, so your replacement consumer units, you're kind of stuck with what you've got. And if you're lucky, you'll have lots of excess length where you can make a neat and tidy job. And if you're unlucky, you'll just be dropping straight down into the top of those RCBOs. And you can see in this case, I've got quite a decent bit of length on those cables. So I'm getting them tucked down the bottom of the DIN rail. So that's the line and neutrals arranged in a way where I can just loop over into the top of those RCBOs. And again, those M2 RCBOs are very, very compact, which is why I selected that board on a recent video I did when I was in a tight space because the enclosures tend to be smaller as well so if you've got those smaller protected devices you've got more wiring room within an enclosure because they are not quite as tall so although a lot of these are all called miniature RCBOs it's worth keeping in your mind somebody's miniature is different to somebody else's and you see there I've got those looped down the back there so we're straight down the back of the DIN rail and then we're dropping right over the top with a little swoop into the top of the RCBOs and again just try and keep your conductors as neat as you can um, you know, it's it's serviceable, that's the most important thing, that your terminations are sound and that the wires are easily accessible and identified. It doesn't have to be picture perfect. I tend to spend about an hour on a consumer unit and can get a reasonable result in that time. But, you know, it's, it's not all about the looks at the end of the day. These things are going to have a lid on and nobody's going to be looking at it for five years. So while you don't want to leave a rat nest, you don't have to leave a work of art either. Moderation is key with all of these things. And you can see there, I'm just going over these just to try and make sure we've got them as neat and tidy as possible. And again, the CPCs, if you want, you can loop down to the bottom of the board and then back up again to leave some length on those. I tend to, with top entry, swoop around in a horizontal plane behind the terminal bar of the neutral and the CPC. And then a quick loop up into that CPC earth bar, as you'll see me doing here, just to try and leave a bit of length on those cables so you can pull them forward for testing. And also if you've got an issue or somebody comes to replace the board in the future, they've got as much cable length as can be reasonably expected. And, and again, you can see there, I've got those in. These are seven strand, they're not solid core twin and earth cables. So they aren't quite as rigid to get in a nice straight line. You can, if you want, use a cable tie. I would tend to cut cable ties as I'd finish the job rather than leave them on. But there's generally no reason why you can't leave them there. People get far too upset about that in most cases because usually you've got quite a lot of trunking on the lead up to a consumer unit and most of your D-rating will have already been taken into account because of that. But you'll see I'm using some of these sticky tabs. I don't know if you've ever seen these 
before, but they can stick to the back of the enclosure and they have a little um, handle on them that you can lock over the conductors and it just kind of keeps them in place. And if anyone comes to work on the board afterwards, they can remove that and um, easily pull the cables forward and do whatever they need to. It also enables you to lay them flat on the enclosure rather than bunched together too tightly. And that's come up reasonably well, I think. So that's for a top and rear entry and again, front view of the different sizes on those breakers. So this one is bottom entry and it's an Elysium board. Generally, in terms of getting a neat and tidy finish, the best chance you're going to have is with bottom entry. And that's because most of the cables are already coming up behind the DIN rail. So you just need to have that swoop over and into the, the terminals again on your overcurrent protected devices. You know, with this one, I try and set them up as best I can as they enter into the board. It's all in the prep. So bring your cables through the grommet holes in the orientation you intend to pop them into the protective devices that way you're not crossing conductors over inside the board giving yourself as much wiring space as possible and you'll see as i jump forward onto this one it's come up pretty decent so i'm looped over with generous loops on this and again that's to try and leave a bit of extra cable on the conductors um, if anybody has to come and do some work afterwards i'll pull them forward for testing they've got a bit of something there to have a fighting chance of being able to do that so use generous, generous loops again on the CPCs and you can see I've just about brought them straight up the back of the board and looped over into the um, earth bar at the top. And again, leaving as much on there as I can. I do like the earth clamps on these Elysium boards, uh, sorry, the tail clamps. I think that's a nice touch because they do separate apart so you can fit them in after the board's been put together. And if you've come through a grommet hole as I have, it gives you that added bit of security that you know the tails are held firmly. But yeah, that's basically it. A nice, neat and easy to achieve tidy job. This one took about an hour to dress away. There's no rings on there. It's nice and straightforward. Big loops across the top of the protective devices and straight in. And then up the back of the enclosure and looped into the earth bar. That tends to be how I would deal with a bottom entry consumer unit. So you can see in this next range of pictures, this is a swap over board. So this is pre-existing cable lengths. And with that one, you're kind of tied to what you've got. So you can see with a cooker circuit there... It is what it is. There's not a lot of extra length to try and reposition that into the um, into the terminals in any different way to, to what you can achieve, to be totally truthful. So they kind of drop down with a nice loop as best you can. And then obviously your CPCs loop around the top. Any excess length that you're lucky enough to have, you can hide behind those earth and neutral bars. Um, but sometimes you're just stuck with what you got on those. So I hope you found that mildly interesting i just wanted to have a quick run through a couple of consumer units show you some of the differences in the way the cables will dress together when you are entering from the top or the bottom of an enclosure um, also a little chat through when you're replacing an existing consumer unit and you kind of set to the lengths of the cables as they enter you can only do so much with those and if you watch some of the videos i've shared earlier on on my channel over the last few months you'll see loads of different examples of consumer units some of them where it's fresh wire on a rewire and you can make a really nice, neat, tidy job of it within an hour or so. They don't take especially long once you get into the routine and habit of doing them. And then some of them are challenging ones where you've got about 10 mil spare and you try not to extend your cables unless you absolutely have to. So go and check those out if you want to see a little bit more about that. And again, everyone has their own way of doing this. This isn't the right way or the wrong way. It's just my way. So if you agree with it or you have ways that you think might be better let me know in the comments but while we're on about the giveaways for national apprenticeship week you'll see me have a quick run through them at the start of this video i've got some of the stuff together here on the desk i just wanted to kind of go through it in a bit more detail and I'll, i won't mention who all of this stuff is from as we go through it. i'm just going to show you what it is and if you want to enter as i said if you go over to apprentice one to one on instagram all of the giveaways are on there or my twitter account which is electrician underscore 24 7 and I've also been sharing them here and there on my LinkedIn account, which is just Mark Allison on LinkedIn. Um, so yeah, go and check those out, get involved. As I said, this is National Apprenticeship Week, week of the 7th of February, 2022. They're all active. They're all there for anyone to go and enter right now when this video is released. And we'll be picking winners sometime in the next week or so. But we have here a little solder mate. So that's always a nice useful one if you're doing your LED strip lighting. So we've got one of those to give away. It's nice, we've got a few of these um, TIS 851s. So I think we've got four of these now that have been sent in. So they're going out on giveaways as well, which are great. These are the, the self-proving ones. So they're um, 
don't know how that's coming up onto focus because I'm on my webcam here, but that's the GS38 compliant one. And they do do um, approving test. So it's not the equivalent of approving unit, I don't believe, but they will show you that they are operational and working, you know, without a separate approving unit, just not to the same equivalent before anyone gets upset about that. Um, there's a Klein tools, uh, that's your data terminal connections, that's the older version, so there is a newer version, someone sent that in, they've upgraded their Klein tools data connector, um, terminal making off, whatever we're going to call it, they've got the new one so they've sent in their old one, but it is fully working, it's in good nick, I'm sure that'll prove useful to an apprentice. Uh, we've got a few of these uh, lockout kits and these were sent in by Vanessa and Malcolm from Superrod and Klein. They sell a sent a whole box through um, maybe six months ago now I think and I've been slowly giving them away through the course of giveaways on the Apprentice 1 to 1 Instagram since then and there's just a few left so I'm going to get those out on this one as well. So I'm not going to mention who they were from but yeah, I had to make that clear because they did send them in a while ago. We've got some CK croppers, so brand new in the box. These are the best value croppers that you can get after my extensive research of my own. For those of you who've been following my videos, you'll have known I've gone through quite a few different sets of croppers, and they're my favourites. Um, we've also got a set of CK snips, and these are the ones with the, the holes in for your 2.5 and your 1.5 mil. You can also cut 3.5 mil and 4 mil threaded um, bolts so your socket and light switch front covers and also if you're doing conduit work your box lids on there as well it'll cut those down with this tool these are proper decent actually and again VDE rate to a thousand volts really nice little set we have got the Bosch bit set this is fantastic actually these are um, really good value for what you get in them so you've got your long bits on there that you'll see you've got a little socket set in there and that's got the what socket sizes have we got? Let's have a look. Um, six, eight, and ten mil. And you've also got a bit holder, a couple of bit holders. You've got some torque bits, flat heads, Allen key heads, your uh, Phillips and Posi heads in there. Really good little set in a nice hard wearing case. I've got one of these actually of my own and I use it every day. They're absolutely brilliant. These Draper BDE. Um, interchangeable screw drivings, screwdriver sets, these are incredible as well. Uh, I think they're around 20 odd quid, they're not expensive for what you get and the quality is, is absolutely there. We've given a few of these away and the reviews that have come back from people who've won them have been really good. So you've got a little um, small handle there that you might use for some of your, your smaller fiddlier terminals with a couple of smaller um, posi one heads on there and then the bigger handle as well, and the blades fit in either or. Absolutely cracking value, and a nice little case as well from Draper, and again, rated to a thousand volts. Nice little set for an apprentice to get their hands on. We've got a CK pad saw, I think. Yep, it's not a saber tooth saw. That's a nice one for cutting out your back boxes. CK little mini level. Again, if you're putting your boxes in, first and second fix, ideal. The CK re-threading tool, this is something that we've um, got every member of our team now because I was sick of everyone nicking mine. These will get you out of trouble. And if ever they don't work, you can get the back, spot, back box repair kits for the lugs as well. So you don't have to go digging out the wall to replace them if they get damaged. Uh, we've got a set of the NWS snips. And again, that's got the 1.5 and 2.5 holes in. And it will also crimp. You know, these are a multi-tool and it will cut the three and a half mil bolts down as well. So they're another nice set of side cutters. I've also got the NWS strippers and these are used, so they're not brand new. But they are spring loaded, they're decent, they're still sharp, they still work. So they'll make a nice little set for an apprentice as well. I've then got the weir uh, end strippers. Now these are a bit different. See they've got the hole in there, that's for stripping the outer flex. Oh, you can use them on tails, I've used these on tails before where you can take the outer insulation off. Got a little cropping cutter on there as well and then you've got a little stripping holes, I don't know if you can see that, for your 2.5 and your 1.5 mil conductors. These are actually pretty good. Um, I've got a set of them and I use them a fair bit. A set of the Armeg magnetic bits. Will's Electric just reviewed some of these on his channel, I think it's called Electrician TV. 
these are fantastic. You get a screw on the end of there and you're not going to be shaking it off as hard as you might try. They stay stuck on there, absolutely brilliant. So we've got a set of those mag bits from our mag. We've got a G-Pro kit set of um, push fit terminals. So these are your lever connectors. Varying sizes in there in a nice little case. So they're the G-Pro kit ones. Decent quality, I use those as well. We've got a few different sets of crimping tools. So we've got your terminal crimping press, and that's for your insulated red, blue, and yellow ones. There's a different iteration of that on there as well. And we've also got a few of these, um, which is more for your feral dens, you'll see on there. And I've got a great big box of crimps as well. So everybody who wins one of these, will be getting quite a selection of crimps too. We've got the DeWalt brushless combi drill driver and that comes in the T-Stack box with the battery and the charger. Um, there's some other bits been sent. I don't know exactly what we're getting, but Pete's sending a few bits in. Schneider's sending us some bits in. I think they're gonna be sending a consumer unit that we can give away. And the idea of that is we're gonna donate that to an apprentice where they can share their work and hopefully be able to share some content around them installing that, um, either be it as a test board for themselves while they're going through the training or if they're a bit further on with the learning, on a job with their mentor, obviously, to supervise and check the work's done correctly and safely. Um, but the whole idea of that is to just demonstrate it's been installed, tag us in the post, and use the share your work hashtag. Um, that is going to be one of the key entry requirements to some of these last few giveaways we've got dropping. So at the minute, I think the active ones, um, we've got six that are active now. So there's obviously quite a few more giveaways to go live as yet. Um, but some of those you're going to have to demo some of your work either in an Instagram story or in a post or something a little bit of work you've done even if it's um, theory work in the classroom or a demonstration of some of your practical work out on site tag us in the post and that's what you can do to enter some of these competitions some of the other ones you just have to follow us and like the post and share it on your story uh, we're trying to make it a little bit more difficult just to try and reduce the volume of people getting involved but I do hope that a lot of you will tag us into the post of you sharing your work and um, get involved with that don't be put off from showing the world what you can do um, and most decent people will not want to call you out in any hurtful and disrespectful way over that oh, actually I'm just seeing that sat there because I've usually got one of these on my desk but we've also got a few on-site guides been sent in to give away which is nice I know the regulations are changing in March um, but these generally, most of the content that's in them stays roughly about the same. So they're going to be useful regardless. And um, for the time being, you've got a six month window after March. So for most of 2022, this is still going to be very re uh, very resourceful for an apprentice or two. And they're actually active on a giveaway right now. So it's not just about tools. You can also get yourself some of the, the books as well. But otherwise, just thank you to everyone who has sent some stuff in. There's too many people to list all of you, and I still don't have all of the equipment in um, to give away. Actually, I'm just thinking of another gent, um, Andrew, from over on LinkedIn. He's just been messaging me today about sending some stuff in. He's got a right collection together. I think there's a rucksack and some other tools and bits that he's popped in there as well. So once that comes, we'll get that out as well. Otherwise, thank you for bearing with me through the course of this video. Thank you to everyone who's got involved with the giveaways. If you have entered, best of luck. It is all going to be totally random, so messaging me how brilliant you think I am is not going to increase your chances of winning, so there's absolutely no point in doing that. <clears throat> and otherwise, just thank you for watching. Back to the regular content, I've got quite a bit of stuff recorded already from the usual EV charge point installs, a few consumer unit replacements, and some positive input ventilation systems. I did a video on one of those a while ago. <clears throat> I don't think there's many YouTube people who've dropped content out on those so i'm going to do a couple more on them go into a bit more detail and they'll be coming up soon as well otherwise thank you for watching this video i will catch you on the next one stay safe have a brilliant week and i hope you got involved in your college's efforts for national apprenticeship week catch you on the next one